Well, world leaders meeting in Pittsburgh today to discuss the global economy and the health of the financial system at the G20 summit. And Bloomberg's Peter Cook is live there with one of uh, with the UK's Chancellor of the Exchequer, Peter. That's right. One of the central players in these talks here at the G20 Summit in Pittsburgh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Alistair Darling, joining me. Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate you joining us here on Bloomberg. Let me ask you, sir, as you get set to, to wrap up the final negotiations today, do you feel confident you will be able to leave Pittsburgh satisfied that uh, if uh, regulatory changes are put in place, that we can avoid another crisis like the one we've just been through? I think we've taken a major step along the way. Uh, no one can be completely satisfied until the job's actually completed. But what I'm clear about is that we've got an agreement that the regulatory regime has to be far tighter. We have to have a more sensible uh, pay and reward policy so that reward is linked to what people actually do and to long-term performance. We've also, I think, got made a big stride forward in getting agreement that countries will need to work more closely together in the future. We've shown over the last 12 months how working together works. We've got to make sure that in the future that we head off some of these problems before they actually develop. Let me ask you about some of the specific regulatory changes because there has been a lot of debate heading into Pittsburgh. Bank capital standards, leverage ratios, are you all on the same page with regard to that? If I'm a bank operating in the United States, in the UK, what will change as a result of this summit? I think firstly, the regulatory regime will be more intrusive. It'll ask more searching questions than it did in the past and all regimes, not just in one country. Uh, there is an agreement that banks need to be adequately capitalized. Now that's something that only the individual regulator can decide what your capital requirement is, uh, but also in relation to pay and bonuses and so on. Uh, people have said they've got to be linked to performance, they've got to be deferred uh, so that there's a chance to see whether or not what you do actually comes up with the goods and they can be clawed back if you don't come up to the mark. Uh, there needs to be more openness, more transparency. Now I think the test of course will come, can individual countries actually implement this and put it into statute in their own countries? But the lesson of the last you know, year, uh, 18 months, is unless countries act together on a, and find global solutions to these things, then they simply won't work. I think we've made a major step forward this weekend, and it needs to be built on. The arguments made, put forward by the French, by the Germans heading into here, there was a lot of talk about compensation caps, caps on bonuses. Is it fair to say that this communique in the end will stop short of that? Well, the problem with individual caps on bonuses is that, quite simply, it wouldn't work. Uh, people just put out their pay or they'd go and get uh, paid somewhere else. Uh, and I think there is an agreement now, which we built on in London a couple of weeks ago, which will be adopted uh, today, I hope. Uh, which will simply say that uh, you've got to have very strict guidelines on when bonuses are paid, uh, if they're paid, deferred, paid in stocks and shares, uh, that they can be clawed back. And I think that's a far better way. You need to have a practical approach, one that actually works. And I think we've got that agreement. Your sense how significant this framework for global growth going forward, Secretary Geithner talked about it with uh, reporters yesterday. This is an effort to try and address some of these global imbalances that have been in place. Some have said contributed to the crisis. It's voluntary. Does that mean it's not that significant? No, I, I think you've got to look at this as a first stage. You know, for many, many years, people have talked about uh, you know, global imbalances and the need to do something about it and to perhaps recapture the spirit that we had in 1944 when we realized that countries needed to work together. It's taken a crisis to get the world to come together, and it's worked. We now need to make sure that we can head off some of these problems in the future. Now, does that mean it's all sorted and all the problems are resolved? No, it doesn't. But it does mean, as Hector Geithner has said, that we're determined to make make progress. And the fact that the United States, China, uh, all the emerging economies, ourselves, we're all here uh, working together, I think demonstrates that there is a seriousness of intent here. The test, of course, like everything else in politics, is after you leave Pittsburgh, uh, what do you do? And you know, that's why there's a big, big burden on the shoulders of each and every one of us to make sure we actually implement at home what we've agreed to at international conferences. Chancellor Dye, I know you have to get back to the talks. We appreciate you joining you us here on Bloomberg. Indeed. And uh, that's the latest from here in Pittsburgh. Betty, We'll send it back to you. Okay. Thank you so much, Peter. And